what prompted you to get into this line of business? Well, um, my background is uh, technology oriented. I, in college, I did uh, business information technology. And one of the key units that we undertook uh, in, in my class was project management. And I decided to focus on that because I realized there was a big gap uh, in the country uh, in regards to project management. You have projects, you've seen even government projects, they have you know, big and, and excellent funding, but there's no project manager to ensure that what the people want, the deliverables, are met according to the time, the quality. Uh, as, as required. What, then that's when I decided to pick project management and client relations as, as my bit and I run, I think I do well in it and it's an excellent uh, task for me uh, each and every other day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as for me, I did Bachelor of Computer Science. Uh, one thing I liked about uh, now the software part of my degree was now the websites started simply simply with HTML, group CSS and all that CSS now we combined with HTML and then we grew further and now content building content management systems for web development and now we're actually trying to expand maybe go into mobile because now the other thing is we need to focus on mobile technology. Everything needs to be accessible on by phone. So that's where we're trying to. High points and low points of your venture. Our highest moments are when, when we see the customer smiling at what we've just given them. We've delivered and they're looking at the work and they're trying to look for a mistake but they can't find one. Maybe a small error like a full stop or a capital letter is missing, things like that. But basically the overall Overall, they're happy with what we've given them. That is one, one of our highest moments. Wow, Lose. Uh, I would say once you do a good job, there's always an influx of clients. So at times, it's reached a level where we're saying, hey, you know, you have to wait for maybe two weeks before we can attend to your work. And most clients are not happy about that. But once we touch the work, it's like touching a stone and turning it into gold, which honestly keeps our clients coming back. No matter how busy we are, they, they'll be glad to wait for their time in order for us to serve them. Um, and at a low moment, I'll, I'll advise other startups to get their structures correct uh, during the formation of the company. That's one thing we've learned the hard way. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's excellent that they get their structure. The structure is correct. That way you move quickly, move faster, Everyone has their roles uh, well fixed to them and they understand and they can work exceptionally well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the laws I have learned. What is your hiring policy? We don't have employees, but we have a team. We have a team of about five people. Mm -hmm. We are the two designers, uh, two programmers, and now the mm -hmm. project manager. How do you balance work and personal life? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this, as a startup, personal life and business is like one of, it's just like your life. Mm -hmm. I'll find myself in a social gathering, but at the same time I'm still selling about Sprint, I'm talking about Sprint, what you can do, what you can deliver. So when you're starting up, it's very, there's a very thin line uh, to keep. You have to keep selling at the same time, you have to maintain your social status, but somehow the business is more important to you in the social life, so you have to keep, you know, the balance is a bit tricky, but it works for us. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, it's a very thin line. Sometimes you find yourself working on a Sunday, just because, not that you don't have anything else to do, it's just there's a deadline that's going to be met, that has to be met by Monday morning, you know, or you need to break your back because you're a small agency. The big guys already have, they have like 10 employees to do what you are doing alone. So sometimes we find ourselves trying, we've neglected social, our social life. We are very work oriented most of the times, but uh, as you grow, things change. 
because now maybe you, after now when you put in a structure that's when you tend to relax more on the work because maybe now what you are doing alone that should include another three guys now you have another three guys to do it now that's where the structure comes in place and now at least now the social part of your life can grow what are your future plans well uh, the country is growing to want to lean towards the mobile end mm -hmm. we want to look at that as one of our key areas of growth uh, once we have a mobile uh, once we can be able to feed into the we can fit into the mobile end I think we'll have a great uh, company that will grow and keep growing and growing on and on and on. But I think web space is quite big, so we'll, I guess mobile is also picking up pretty well. Resources needed to scale up your business? Well, we need to learn uh, some new programming languages, which uh, Gideon is gladly doing. Um, um, in terms of skill set, we need someone who's going to be someone who is not close-minded, someone who is able to learn <coughs> quick on their feet. Mm -hmm. There is a time we promised a client something we've never done before, but we we learned within a week and we were running with it. Right now we are we're like pioneers, we are actually being consulted upon such things. So uh, we need an open hard worker, good discipline and an open-minded person, mm -hmm. creative. Yeah. What kind of CSR activities are you involved in? Yeah, sure, definitely we've had uh, a couple of them. Uh, uh, I'll talk about the Hangar project. Mm -hmm. This is where we get clothes from, like yourself. You have those many clothes in the wardrobe and, and, and you don't wear them anymore. We get them, we wash them. If they need to be stitched together, we stitch them. But we don't do the stitching actually, we get some ladies from Kibera, we sort of provide the day job for them to ensure that the clothes are put in good order, mm -hmm. then we distribute them to the needy people. Yeah, and there's Literate Kenya. There's Literate Kenya, there's also another one, uh, we partnered with other guys who are doing, they are actually like trying to educate, they have a mission to educate the whole of Kenya. They want to have, <coughs> they want by, the, by 2012 to have each as they want to bring up a rural school to the level of a national school. So they do this by collecting books. Maybe you have four books that you never use. Now they take those books and now take them to such rural areas, build a library for them. And then every other time they come and maybe if the syllabus is revised, they get uh, new books and everything. They're partnered actually with um, some publishers, some big name publishers that give them books and all. Um, they, they are they're heading towards now technology type of uh, learning, e-learning sort of kind of thing.